Good morning from sunny Helsinki, and welcome back to the 5G Hack the Mall channel. We would like to thank you for all of your quest questions for all our challenge owners, and we will an answer them as soon as possible on client to your challenge boards. Uh, I would like to state also that where the stream is also available on YouTube, so I would like to recommend you to try YouTube if the quality of the stream is better there. Today, we are going to have three different lectures, and the first one is about to start soon. Next up, we are going to have Sasu Tarkamas lecture about 5G and edge intelligence. Thank you for the introduction. So, good morning. It's really great to be here today and tell you about 5G and edge intelligence. My name is Sasu Tarkoma. I'm a professor at the University of Helsinki Department of Computer Science and also the head of the department at the moment. And uh, my research team has been working on this edge intelligence topic. And uh, it's a very exciting direction for future uh, development. And uh, today uh, I will be giving an introduction to edge intelligence in the 5G context. So I will tell you a bit about 5G architecture and edge computing. And then uh, I will explain uh, the key points in edge intelligence, so how AI is being used within the network and also through the network in supporting applications and services. And then uh, we will discuss a bit about recent uh, work in uh, mapping this area. So what is the roadmap for edge intelligence for the future? We have the 6G context as well, so looking beyond 5G as well. And, uh, and I will discuss a bit about recent work on a white paper outlining edge intelligence uh, challenges for the 6G uh, area. And then I have three examples in how we apply AI uh, uh, through the network. So we have uh, one example on how we generate networks and network configurations. Then uh, there is another example on network security. So AI and security offered by the network through edge computing. And then finally, we have uh, this example on how to use uh, sensing in the 5G context and support AI and sensing at the edge of the network. So three examples, and now uh, let's get going uh, into the topical uh, domain. So one question for us uh, here is, of course, that why we need 5G and why we need edge computing. And uh, the general understanding is that even though in 4G we have quite good uh, broadband. Uh, 4G doesn't support all the vertical uh, domains in which we need uh, this uh, connectivity. So we have, uh, for example, IoT, we have autonomous vehicles and so on. So we have really many verticals. And, and 4G is having challenges in kind of accommodating all these needs of the different verticals. So uh, as one uh, domain, we have human-centric uh, cases for the network especially video delivery. And, and here 4G is, is of course doing, uh, doing a very good, uh, good job, uh, but uh, we can uh, of course always improve and that's the aim in 5G that we have much better throughput than and lower latency uh, for interactive uh, videos and so on. So many improvements are planned in 5G and also beyond uh, in this area. Uh, then we have uh, the requirement for really kind of a, a low latency operation and highly reliable operation. For example, we want to connect drones and autonomous vehicles and such systems. And here we really need to have uh, capabilities uh, that we have uh, in 5G. And then uh, we have uh, the IoT, the industrial internet. So different kinds of uh, IoT devices, industrial systems being connected. And here we have uh, especially the reliability requirement, low latency requirement, and security as key points uh, that the ne network needs to support. And, and, and these can be viewed as new uh, features through the 5G uh, uh, network. And of course, what happens beyond uh, 5G. So uh, we can uh, conclude that there are these different vertical uh, domains. Here uh, on this slide you can see a diagram illustrating two dimensions. So we have uh, on y-axis the latency, and then on uh, x-axis we have throughput. And you can see that we have a lot of ground to cover. So we have really many different kinds of uh, usage cases from uh, this uh, sensor network style of operation, 
uh, with very kind of low volume traffic uh, to uh, tactile internet and uh, autonomous vehicles and uh, augmented reality in which we have high throughput and a low latency requirement. So uh, there's a lot of ground to cover and uh, now the expectation is, is that through 5G we are able to accommodate these different requirements by configuring the network to meet uh, these demands. And here uh, edge computing uh, plays a very crucial role. So edge computing enables us to place functionality very close to the end devices. And that's one uh, step that we need to take in order to reduce latency and also uh, increase privacy as well of the overall uh, data usage and, uh, and computing. So edge computing plays a crucial part and overall 5G will be uh, kind of much more flexible as a network technology in how we configure and you know, set up uh, the functionality offered by the network. And through this, we can then address these requirements, for example, the requirement for local computing, the requirement for low latency, coping with these different bandwidth requirements, and then also the requirement for privacy as well. So these are the, the important uh, uh, points here. And now, uh, how will 5G approach uh, these requirements? So basically, we have uh, two different dimensions here. So we have one, uh, on one hand, we have the radio access network, and then we have the flexible core network. And, and these, uh, of course, uh, evolve uh, together, but they have a bit different, uh, different technical uh, dimensions. Uh, and uh, today, I will focus on the core network uh, uh, part, core network dimension in which we have the uh, edge uh, computing uh, uh, there, but it does have, of course, a lot of uh, connections with the radio axe network as well. So these are kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, things that are deployed together, of course, so lots of links between these. But uh, as we know, uh, the radio axe network is evolving, and, and we have a lot of improvements there in radio and how the radio is used. Uh, we have uh, smaller cells, uh, we have the cloud uh, RAN, uh, and, and so on. So lots of uh, interesting developments. And then for the core network, uh, there is also a big change uh, from 4G. So now we have a service-based architecture. It's fully cloud-based. Uh, we have the network slicing as a concept. So that through software-defined networking, we can manage uh, the network, so the switches and the servers, their network uh, uh, kind of uh, connectivity properties, how flows go through the network, and then we can place computing uh, through VMs, containers, over uh, this uh, uh, telecom environment. And that's really very exciting uh, development here. And uh, for, for AI, of course, we talk about uh, machine learning components, functionality that's uh, offered through VMs, through containers that are placed uh, over the network. And then we can really configure the placement so that we have the end devices, the edge servers, the uh, telecom cloud, and then the faraway cloud as well. So it's really, you know, this end-to-end -end environment that we can now program. And that's a big change from the past. So this programmability. And thus, uh, the focus is now on software rather than, uh, you know, uh, having the emphasis on hardware. Of course, hardware is very important uh, here as well, but we have more and more uh, capabilities offered uh, through software. So that's a big change. And uh, now just to define things uh, a bit more, so we have the network slices. So network slices are really, as mentioned about SDN, being able to configure the switches, the, the network fabric, so that we, we kind of manage how the flows, how packets go through uh, the network and we have full programmability over this. And then on top of this, we have uh, uh, the network the, this virtual network function. So basically we have the VMs, the containers with the uh, additional uh, logic. And, and some of this relates to the network, so uh, relates to flow, flow processing, but some is then uh, more application specific, especially the components we run at the edge uh, of the network on edge servers. And, uh, and now we can see the network slice as being a kind of a, uh, this kind of a managed uh, kind of a portion uh, 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 that's uh, having certain properties that are defined in a service level agreement, meeting certain uh, uh, expectations regarding uh, user experience, having certain configuration of these uh, network functions, and, uh, uh, and we can have uh, many of these slices so, so we kind of share the physical infrastructure. 
and have this kind of logical uh, uh, operation happening there. So that's of course a very exciting uh, development so we can uh, then generate these slices and uh, each slice is then responsible for certain applications, certain application types uh, having certain functionality deployed through the slice. And uh, in 5G, uh, we have three uh, key uh, elementary network slices. So uh, we have one on mobile broadband, illustrated in this uh, figure at the, at the bottom of the figure. Uh, then we have the IoT, so the massive uh, machine type communications uh, slice. And then we have uh, the slice for ultra uh, low latency, ultra reliability uh, cases, where we really have very stringent requirements for the, for the network for example, supporting drones and uh, autonomous vehicles and so on. So three different uh, network slices, three different uh, environments uh, that the network uh, uh, supports. And maybe perhaps uh, later on, we will have more of these network slices. So, so we envisage that we can generate uh, these slices and, and really uh, meet uh, various application requirements through the slice generation. But at the moment, uh, we can talk about three uh, uh, slices, three slice types, and then edge computing being part of these slices. And uh, as mentioned, now we have the programmability of the, of the network, and then we can place these VNFs, these uh, v uh, virtual machines and containers over the slice uh, to provide functionalities. That's the basic uh, setup. And of course, uh, this is uh, a very dynamic uh, environment, so it requires quite a lot of monitoring and quite a lot of optimization as well. So also at runtime, we uh, tune how uh, the network operates and how the VMs are executed, where they are placed, uh, and so on. So quite a lot of operational concerns as well. But uh, then through this, we are able to meet uh, the, the versatile requirements of the applications. So that's uh, the background for us for the, for the core network and, and for, for, the, for the edge uh, computing and the, how slices play a role here. And now uh, we have the notion of uh, edge intelligence. And uh, edge intelligence and edge AI, uh, they just mean that we have the edge uh, uh, server capability. We can place uh, machine learning components, AI components uh, at the edge of the network. Uh, and we can keep the data gathering, data processing local, localized, very close uh, to the uh, sensors, the actuators, the smartphones, and other devices. So that's really the key point here, that uh, we localize uh, the, the, the operations in a way. And this means that we can have low latencies, we can have a higher level of uh, privacy and security for the data gathering, data processing. So for many uh, smart city scenarios, for example, this is really uh, very important that we also take privacy into account and, and do not send uh, you know, uh, information that is uh, privacy sensitive and that we uh, possibly uh, do not need to send uh, you know, uh, further away from the, from the edge server. And of course, by doing this kind of localized processing, we also save a lot of network capacity as well, because we only send what is needed uh, to the you know, more uh, far away components to the uh, you know, cloud uh, uh, backend. So that's really the essence of, uh, of edge intelligence. And uh, also uh, as, as a kind of observation, so, so edge intelligence is not only needed for the applications or for the verticals, we also need to have this edge intelligence, edge AI for the network itself. So we can also talk about having this kind of a cognitive uh, network uh, capabilities that uh, that we, we, we use the, the AI techniques for optimizing network processes as well. Uh, and uh, that's an exciting direction here, uh, in addition to supporting the, uh, the verticals. So uh, we have these two dimensions here. So edge intelligence, and uh, we have uh, AI for edge, and then edge for AI. So uh, the first, so AI for edge, is really about supporting the, the network. So the radio management, cloud run aspects, uh, slicing, function placement, and, and, and so on. Uh, of course, security uh, through uh, distributing uh, AI components in the network. So these are uh, for the network optimization and support. And then the other dimension is Edge for AI, in which we really uh, support uh, applications, and we do this by distributing the AI components uh, over the end-to-end -end environment. 
and, uh, and as mentioned here, then we gain, uh, gain this localized uh, computing for any application. And, uh, and that's, of course, something that uh, is expect expected to really uh, you know, support many, uh, many current applications and also emerging application uh, cases uh, as well. And now, so if you compare, so how does this really, you know, uh, change uh, the, the design of uh, AI applications, for example, and AI use cases? So it's actually a very radical uh, change. So we have the, the current situation on the left-hand side here, so that we have uh, the centralized cloud for AI, and we gather uh, data from these different uh, devices, and most of the data is taken to this faraway cloud for uh, data analysis, and then creating these uh, machine learning models, and then we use the models at the, at the cloud. So uh, everything goes to the cloud, and then we use the models there. And, and sometimes we can, of, of course, uh, you know, uh, uh, take the models from this centralized cloud and use them closer to the device. So that's a step towards this edge computing uh, way of doing things. But now uh, for edge intelligence, so we, we have this more radical change, so that uh, the whole process of data gathering, model building, model uh, use uh, is distributed and decentralized as well. So that we have uh, these devices, uh, you know, building models locally on the device, building models at the edge of the network with the edge servers, uh, with the support of the telecom cloud, and, and possibly also with the support of the, of the far away, the more centralized cloud. And, uh, and it's really, uh, you know, uh, uh, a very kind of rich environment for, for creating uh, these models, uh, utilizing the data and its possibilities. Of course, it's also more complicated and, and complex environment. And, uh, and the thinking is that the, the benefits outweigh uh, this complexity here so that we, we gain uh, uh, this flexibility that we really use uh, the local uh, computing resources that we don't use today. So we really miss a lot of opportunity there. And then uh, we can uh, uh, reduce uh, this network uh, uh, capacity demands uh, upstream uh, because we do this localized operation. And then we can increase privacy as well. So we gain many good things uh, by doing this. But of course, it requires uh, quite advanced methods for machine learning, how we do the distributed learning, distributed uh, use of the models, how we do updates. Uh, etc. So there are a lot of uh, interesting uh, research questions here that we need to address to really uh, be able to deploy uh, such a model of, uh, for edge intelligence. And today we have already quite a lot of groundwork done for this. We have machine learning concepts like uh, federated learning, transfer learning. We have uh, also differential privacy based methods. Uh, and, and so on. We have also ways to share computing power, sensing resources of, of uh, devices in an opportunistic manner and so on. So we do have many of these ingredients ready uh, and, uh, and some of this is something that we can do already in the 5G context. But there are also some aspects that we see that would then be beyond 5G, so would be part of 6G uh, later on. So it's a kind of evolution of uh, how, how this uh, this goes forward. And, uh, and we actually, we, we created a survey uh, around this uh, topic. So you can see the survey uh, title at the bottom of the slide. So it's called a survey on edge intelligence. It's uh, openly uh, available. And we uh, then in the survey have about 400 scientific papers in this area. And we present a taxonomy that, uh, you know, what are the key uh, components of edge intelligence and uh, what uh, are the kind of state-of-the-art examples, and then we also sketch uh, open issues uh, in the environment. And uh, now to summarize, so here you see uh, a summary diagram of the uh, taxonomy we have been working on. So we have uh, edge, edge intelligence, and then we have four key dimensions here. So they are about the, the kind of the uh, offloading, so basically distributing uh, the, the, the computational tasks to uh, nearby devices and edge servers and even to the cloud. So how do we do that? Uh, then we have caching. So how do we work with the data? How do we cache the data and also uh, the models that we create and update and then share those locally? So that's the, in a way the data management uh, consideration here. And then we have the two important machine learning components. So we have uh, basically edge training so that we create models uh, in this opportunistic uh, distributed decentralized environment 
uh, do it locally uh, and possibly with some help from, uh, from the cloud. And uh, then we have edge inference, so how we use the models uh, in this uh, uh, distributed environment. So four key uh, components, and each component has a lot of, uh, lot of uh, you know, uh, structure, a lot of uh, uh, research results, uh, and so on. Lessons learned uh, from, 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 from this uh, area, and, uh, and, uh, and we uh, in the survey present uh, a summary of, uh, of this uh, for the state of the art. And, uh, and now, uh, so if we kind of uh, consider each of the four domains, so first we have caching, and this now as mentioned about, about this uh, data, uh, data management, that uh, we gather data locally, we create models, we keep uh, data available also locally, and that's really, really this caching, uh, caching aspect. And, uh, and we can do caching at the end devices, we can do caching at the edge servers. And perhaps the base stations also have certain computational and storage capabilities. Also, base stations can be involved uh, in this as well. And then uh, the data is locally available through this caching primitive. And when we need uh, to have access, so then we can uh, consult the local uh, local uh, storage systems for for any cached uh, data or models that uh, we may need. And, and certain uh, synchronization primitives may also be needed to keep, uh, keep this, uh, of course, uh, up to date and going. So caching is one of the components. Then uh, training uh, is, of course, an essential element here, that how do we create these machine learning models? And, uh, and we have, uh, uh, again, the same environment as we have been discussing, that the devices, the edge, uh, uh, the telecom cloud and then the faraway cloud. So these together, as illustrated in the overview diagram, then realize this uh, distributed uh, uh, training of the machine learning uh, uh, models. And uh, we have uh, now uh, two uh, interesting cases here. So one is that we do uh, the training on a single device. So we do it uh, at the you know, end device or at the edge server or then we do it in a collaborative manner so that many devices participate uh, in the process somehow so that uh, uh, we, we, we kind of uh, do not disclose all the data, for example, to us, this, this edge server, but the data is kept by the, by the clients, the end devices, and, 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 and through this, uh, this kind of a protocol, uh, we, we then uh, learn from the data without disclosing uh, all the data to a single uh, point. And that's, of course, something we need for the privacy. And, and there are very interesting techniques for, for doing this. So uh, federated learning is one example of how we can uh, create a model uh, uh, without uh, requiring uh, that uh, the uh, end devices uh, disclose their, their data. We do, do this kind of incremental model building in a collaborative manner. So there are many techniques we can then uh, then utilize, and, and I believe also uh, amount, some amount of uh, new methods development is also needed here to, to really have a, have, a, have a kind of a, uh, optimized solution for, uh, for this uh, learning part. Uh, and, uh, and also we have transfer learning as an interesting element as well, so that we can, we can uh, uh, create a model at one place and then transfer the model to this other place. So that's an optimization we can do. So that's also a very interesting uh, direction as well. And, and certainly there is a lot of uh, work going on in optimizing uh, this uh, uh, training process. So, so we need to have an optimizer module that how, 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 the, how the learning is then uh, conducted and uh, I need to optimize many different parameters uh, uh, here. Some can be optimized uh, offline, but many need to be optimized also uh, online while we are running this, uh, this system. And then, of course, uh, how we use the models. So edge inference is a very uh, important aspect. And, uh, and uh, of course, we have the end-to-end -end environment so that once we have the model, we can use it on the device at the edge and uh, at these different uh, uh, places uh, uh, in the end-to-end -end, uh, environment. And uh, here, uh, the way uh, how we use uh, optimization techniques such as compression and then uh, acceleration uh, is, is also very important that uh, in many cases, especially the end devices are not that powerful, so we have to rely on, on these uh, GPUs and, 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 uh, and other processing units on the device, and then also do this offloading to the edge server uh, that uh, may have a bit 
you know, better computing resources, but also at the edge, uh, we have uh, certain limitations on the computing capabilities. So, so we need to compress the models so that they fit into the memory. We need to do other optimizations as well, and then rely on these uh, acceleration elements that we have, for example, GPUs, TPUs, and whatever other uh, accelerator hardware or software uh, we have. And, uh, and we need to have a framework uh, for uh, configuring this. So, so there is no single solution, I believe, that would you know, meet all the cases, so we need to do this kind of a configuration management. And that's, uh, I believe, something that uh, uh, you know, is not uh, done yet. So that's an open issue, that how we would configure such a system. A very exciting direction for research and development. And then we have the offloading uh, angle. Uh, so that we uh, have uh, these devices uh, and, uh, and we need to distribute uh, the tasks. So we have these uh, various tasks pertaining to, to caching, to, to learning, to inference, and so on. So we need to have a system for uh, uh, basically defining the tasks and then distributing, scheduling the tasks over the environment. And we have uh, a number of existing techniques here. So for example, we have data to cloud offloading, we have data to edge offloading, device to device uh, offloading, uh, and, and, and so on. So, so uh, many different techniques. So device to cloud, device to edge, device to device. And then we can uh, utilize also hybrid schemes so that we you know, build on these more elementary uh, schemes and then create hybrid, hybrid solutions. For example, combining this uh, device to device and, uh, and device to edge and device to cloud uh, together. And uh, that's an optimization problem that uh, then uh, we need to solve. And uh, I think that's also something that uh, we have the uh, ingredients here, but there is still some work to be done in, in this hybrid of loading. That how we really, especially for AI applications, how do we use uh, the uh, computing capabilities uh, of the environment uh, to, to kind of support the application? And then certainly the collaborative uh, aspect here is uh, very interesting, that how we really utilize these devices. And we have also the question of incentives here, that you know, what makes uh, these different devices contribute their computing capability for supporting the network and the applications. So, so also uh, you know, understanding the, the, the kind of uh, costs and benefits and then the incentives, uh, that's also very important here. For industry use cases, these incentives are, are kind of more, more easy to, to kind of determine and, and understand than for the consumer use case, where our devices would kind of uh, uh, participate in, in these computations. And, uh, and so uh, we have these four uh, very interesting components uh, for uh, edge intelligence. And in the survey, uh, we uh, studied the publications and also the publication trends that uh, how this field uh, has been evolving. And uh, this uh, diagram illustrates uh, the uh, publication volume uh, of the field uh, in time. And here you can see that edge uh, intelligence as a, as a kind of general topic has, be, has been kind of gaining ground in recent years. So we have uh, this uh, linear growth uh, for the field uh, in recent years and uh, seems to be you know, uh, going strong. And then for these four components, uh, we see that uh, the uh, caching uh, component, caching dimension, uh, for that we have decreasing uh, uh, curve. So it means that uh, there are fewer papers in recent years uh, for this uh, specific uh, uh, component. So, so there, perhaps the, the interest is kind of uh, decreasing here, that maybe the, the kind of the key, uh, key results have been already uh, presented. Perhaps, uh, in any case, uh, these other components are gaining more interest uh, nowadays uh, than this caching uh, uh, concern. So, so, uh, so we have a lot of interest for, for training and inference and, uh, and of course, this uh, offloading as well. So, uh, so in all, we can conclude that uh, the field is evolving and, uh, and, uh, and there, there are many interesting directions that uh, you know, we need to explore to go towards this uh, a deployment of uh, distributed AI and decentralized AI with the support of uh, edge computing. 
So now uh, I will uh, tell you a bit about our white paper work. So there is a white paper on edge intelligence uh, in the 6G context. So we uh, summarize many of these directions uh, in this white paper. So I recommend to have a look if you're interested. So it's, it's a very nice, nice read, I believe. Uh, and after that, we will go for the examples. So I will present three examples that how AI can be applied uh, in supporting uh, the network and also uh, uh, applications uh, as well. So now uh, let's uh, talk a bit about uh, the 6G white paper uh, that uh, we have been working on in Finland. Uh, there is, of course, a global uh, community around 6G and uh, edge intelligence, and it has been a very international effort in how, how the white paper was uh, prepared. And uh, the white paper uh, basically outlines uh, what I've been explaining, that edge intelligence, uh, what is the main uh, point of edge intelligence, where we need it, and then uh, considering the, the kind of the, the research questions that uh, we need to address in order to, to then... Uh, take this forward and, and eventually deploy edge, edge intelligence in the 6G context. Of course, we can already do quite a lot in the 5G context, but uh, as mentioned, so, so the expectation is that in 6G we will really, really have this more distributed way of uh, uh, doing AI uh, supported by the, by the network. So here uh, you see uh, the two uh, dimensions I mentioned and the white paper view on these, so AI for edge and AI on edge. And, and, and you see that AI for Edge, so it's really about the, the wireless networking and, uh, and, uh, and these uh, primitives uh, that uh, uh, we can, uh, through AI, uh, uh, provide uh, at the edge uh, for supporting uh, network-related operations. And then uh, the other dimension is that how can we support uh, these uh, uh, verticals, these applications, and, uh, uh, and a lot of, uh, lot of sub-topics uh, then uh, uh, you know, uh, require, uh, require research uh, related to these. And overall, <clears throat> so if we think about this end-to-end uh, -end environment, so I've been talking a lot about the end-to-end -end environment, so that's a really, you know, big, uh, uh, big takeaway. Uh, this diagram illustrates that how AI kind of uh, can be uh, gradually moved uh, from the centralized cloud to the uh, end device and then how we can uh, support uh, the AI processing end-to-end uh, -end, uh, across this uh, environment. So here uh, we have at the top, we have the cloud intelligence, so everything is the cloud, as I have been uh, also uh, mentioning, that is one uh, scenario. And then at the bottom, we have uh, AI on device, so everything is local. And, and, and we have divided this end-to-end uh, -end environment from the AI point of view into seven levels. And, uh, and, and level one is that we kind of gradually start to move uh, from the centralized cloud towards the uh, end device so that we have a cloud edge co-inference uh, uh, in this level one. So it's a very kind of, uh, uh, kind of in a way, uh, uh, basic level of uh, distribution uh, for the AI. And, uh, and, and training happens in the cloud uh, uh, here. And, and then on level two, we have uh, basically uh, edge uh, doing uh, quite a lot of this uh, inference. And, uh, and level three is that we have a uh, device uh, doing the inference. And then uh, level four, we, we kind of go, uh, go to a more elaborate setup. So we have cloud edge uh, also doing training as well. So we start to go from inference to training. And then level v five uh, is that we have uh, uh, this edge supported training and level six, uh, edge device co-training, and then level seven is that everything is on the, on the end device. So we kind of gradually go from the cloud to the device, and we have training, and then, uh, then uh, this uh, inference, uh, both, uh, of course, uh, as concerns that we need to, need to take into account. And, uh, and this helps us understand uh, that how this distribution could be, could be realized, and then also we can then expand from these that, uh, what makes sense uh, for, for, for a particular case? How much distribution do we want to have and, and where uh, this uh, AI and, and data processing capability should be placed and, and among which uh, elements uh, we do this placing and how they collaborate in kind of a, uh, then support, <coughs> supporting this uh, computing. So overall seven levels with uh, different uh, levels uh, uh, and, 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 and you know, stages of, uh, of distribution and, and also collaboration regarding uh, AI processing. 
and uh, and the white paper then uh, uh, kind of elaborates these challenges. So so we have uh, in the white paper divided the challenges into domains, and then uh, we kind of pinpoint the key challenges for uh, each of the the domains. And here you see a summary uh, of this. So so basically we see that uh, there is quite a lot of work still to be done uh, for the infrastructure side, especially the dynamic configurations and uh, reliability issues. Uh, mobility, of course, also changes uh, the dynamics when we have moving endpoints and then we may need to reconfigure what is placed at the edge servers. Uh, then uh, we need to have signaling and, and you know, uh, we need to consider state migration and, and you know, component migration and so on. So there are certain, certain things that need to be uh, taken into account. Uh, then software development is a big uh, question that how do we really create uh, applications? How do we do software engineering for the distributed environment? So that's a kind of general uh, you know, uh, uh, challenge for us that how do we really write applications that scale not only at the data center but scale also across data centers and across telecom clouds and edge servers. So I believe that there is a lot of very interesting software engineering uh, architecture work here as well uh, to be done, that how we improve the software development processes for this uh, specific uh, distributed uh, environment. Uh, then, uh, of course, real-time requirements, those are, are, are having certain uh, uh, new, uh, new dimensions here as well. Uh, and then uh, this uh, training, that how we create uh, the, the models in a distributed environment. So as mentioned, so we have uh, very nice uh, starting points like ferret learning, we have transfer learning as well and, and, and other proposals. And now the question is that how we really, you know, uh, uh, develop those and, uh, and, uh, and uh, work with this environment uh, and also the collaborative, uh, you know, uh, kind of notions that how the devices, the servers collaborate in the, in the data storage, um, data processing model creation. So that's, I, I think, something that's very, very exciting uh, direction. Uh, then also security privacy, uh, and then uh, certain uh, end user aspects uh, are, are, are important, of course, and then uh, the, the incentives, as mentioned, so pricing and sharing mechanisms, and, uh, and all these require uh, further uh, uh, work, further analysis uh, here, paving way for the 6G uh, architecture and, uh, and uh, future deployments. So now uh, we have been talking about edge intelligence. So, so now next uh, I will tell you a bit about uh, applications. Uh, we have been working on, on uh, uh, of course, the network itself. So that's the network dimension, and then two different uh, application scenarios. So one is security offered by the network, and the second one is uh, sensing. So how do we connect sensors and the smart city and, and, and support AI processing uh, in this environment? So now we go into these uh, use cases uh, in more detail. And, uh, and first, uh, about this uh, uh, network dimension. So how do we support uh, the, the network operations uh, uh, through AI uh, and, uh, and, uh, and how do we kind of approach cognitive uh, uh, networks. And uh, our approach uh, in this specific case has been to, to kind of uh, study uh, the network uh, architecture, network design, and uh, first of all, uh, have this kind of modular uh, uh, description uh, of, of what we have there and, and also the interfaces, and then decompose uh, this uh, network, this, this modularization uh, into the elementary parts and then recompose it again uh, you know, to, to meet uh, these vertical requirements. So we decompose and then recompose to meet certain objectives in terms of, for example, signaling cost or uh, other uh, requirements uh, towards the network. And, uh, uh, and, and we have been doing this uh, uh, for 4G network and also concerning 5G network architecture as well. And here on this slide you can see our example for the 4G, so for LTE. So you see the uh, modular structure of the LTE network with the key components, so you see the inode piece and uh, the gateways and the interfaces. <clears throat> and then uh, we studied the interfaces and, and the you know, signaling that takes place there and then uh, kind of uh, did the composition of uh, different uh, network uh, uh, kind of uh, designs uh, based on uh, uh, how we minimize uh, the signaling. 
And in the table, you see that uh, we have certain signaling load for the baseline LTE uh, for the different operations supported by the network, like initial, attach, uh, and so on. And th then you see thin edge and intelligent edge uh, scenarios. And uh, the thin edge is a scenario in which we place really uh, just a base station uh, and, and, and with, with really minimal network functionality uh, you know, at the edge. And, uh, and, and we have the base stations, which are very low cost, and then we have the, the kind of the core network. So we have this uh, kind of uh, very, very kind of uh, uh, thin edge in a way here as the end result. And then the intelligent edge scenario is such that we place most of the network functionality into the base station, into E node B. And, uh, uh, and here we can really minimize uh, the signaling between the elements. And then uh, the base station becomes a, a kind of symmetrical element for building networks. So we, of course, we need to have certain uh, backplane for, the, for, for, for data storage, for example, and, and signaling, but otherwise, the intelligent edge base station would be the key building block, block of networks. So we have, have just more of those to, to kind of uh, realize our, our bigger network. And, uh, and that's a kind of exciting uh, kind, of, uh, uh, kind of step here uh, through this uh, decomposition and composition uh, process that, that we did. And, and this basically is, is, is kind of an enabler for uh, understanding also network slices. So we can follow a similar strategy for network slices for the virtual network functions, understanding uh, their interfaces and, uh, and signaling loads and, and other parameters. And then we can also, also compose uh, slices. We can generate slices. And that's part of, I believe, uh, uh, you know, what we could do in the future, that we could generate these slices based on the vertical requirements and optimize these parameters. And, uh, and that's something that uh, uh, requires quite a lot of information about the network. So we need to, of course, have, uh, have this kind of a, a good, uh, good data gathering uh, in place uh, as well here to, to really understand what happens uh, in the network. That's uh, important, especially for the runtime case. So we can do this also at runtime and change the configuration when we see that things, things have changed. So that's one example that we can really do this kind of network refactoring and we can do this uh, uh, even at runtime uh, through the slicing concept. Uh, and that's uh, in-network uh, capability. And of course, edge uh, you know, plays a role here as well in, in kind of uh, supporting the, the operations. And uh, then uh, we have uh, the security as a, as a use case. And uh, as we know, IoT is really a very problematic uh, uh, area in terms of security and privacy. We have these different kinds of devices and then we really need new ways to, to understand what happens and, and also uh, you know, prevent uh, these different security threats in this environment. And uh, we did uh, work on this uh, IoT Sentinel, uh, which was among the first uh, AI solutions for uh, detecting uh, IoT devices. So it's a, it's a technique that uh, does IoT device classification based on the network traffic that uh, they generate. And the idea is very straightforward. So basically we look at the first packets uh, this uh, new IoT device is sending, and we do the uh, classification of the device type based on these packets that we, we see. And, uh, and, uh, and it turns out that actually we can do this identification based on network traffic, and the first packets are enough to do this. So it's a very nice, nice observation. And, uh, and, and, and once we have done this classification, so I know the type of the device, then we can have bounds uh, for the device, that uh, what is the expected network behavior. And if the device goes outside the expected behavior, we can then suspect that there is something strange happening and it may be you know, a malicious uh, device. So, so that's really the, the fundamental uh, uh, idea here behind IoT Sentinel, IoT Sentinel and also our further work uh, in this area. So we have been working on this uh, security AI that's running at the edge of the network on a gateway or the edge server, having access to the IoT device uh, traffic. Uh, of course, you know, there are privacy issues that uh, need to be taken into account, and we do not go into payload here. We just look at the headers of the packets, and we do this at the edge so, so that it's, uh, in a way, taking privacy uh, into consideration. And, uh, uh, and this uh, diagram uh, illustrates the accuracy for this detection. So here, uh, these results are for random forest, 
and, uh, and we have two cases, so we have packet-based case, so we just take the, the first packets uh, of the uh, device, what it has been sending, and then we create a fingerprint based on those and use the fingerprint for the, for the detection. Uh, and the second case is that we also have a certain sequence-based, uh, so basically summary statistics that we use as well. So for example, we can use the uh, packet sizes, we can use the header size, uh, etc. Uh, in addition to the basic uh, uh, kind of uh, packet information that, that, uh, that we have in the, in the kind of basic uh, uh, fingerprint. And it turns out that uh, this packet-based approach works quite well for many IoT devices. So here on the x-axis you see different uh, uh, devices and y-axis is the detection accuracy. And when we go for the summary statistics so that we use also those, we really can you know, uh, dramatically improve uh, the packet-based uh, method uh, accuracy. So, so it's a very kind of favorable result so that we can, uh, given, uh, given background training uh, for, for, for detecting, so, so we, can, uh, we can then at runtime detect these different IoT devices. And, uh, and we have been continuing this work, so, so the current uh, solution is called IoT Keeper. Uh, we have a recent journal paper on this, and now we can do online uh, traffic analysis and uh, uh, and, uh, and you know the, the, the method is now uh, it has been uh, kind of uh, analyzed for many years, so it now uh, you know seems to be quite uh, quite kind of uh, robust uh, as a solution. So if you're interested, please have a look at the paper. And then um, the other case uh, I wanted to mention uh, about this uh, uh, kind of use cases and, uh, and applications for HIE AI and. Uh, and uh, edge intelligence, so we have uh, the sensing scenario. So here we have the smart city environment, and you can see uh, the smart city outlined uh, in, the, in the figure here. So we have uh, you know, uh, sensors in, in, you know, uh, in the kind of roadside, uh, and, uh, and we have the cars and uh, uh, base stations, and then people carrying some uh, devices, and, and so on. So we have this very versatile environment in terms of, in terms of connectivity and, uh, and sensors, and uh, other devices, and, uh, and our uh, kind of uh, goal has been to really uh, enable massive scale sensing of the smart city by, uh, by having uh, different kinds of sensors connected through edge and through the, through the kind of cellular network, uh, and, uh, and air quality has been one of the driving cases, but of course we have also other environmental parameters that we have been considering. And, and today we have uh, our own sensors that we have been deploying. So people have been carrying in the Helsinki area our air quality sensors. So we have a wearable sensor, also some other sensors as well. Uh, we have been also uh, having these uh, stationary, a bit you know, more elaborate sensors. And then of course, uh, utilizing also uh, these uh, heavy duty uh, sensors by the city and also scientific uh, measurement stations as well. So, so there is this, uh, you know, uh, rich information about uh, air quality, about the environment that we can utilize, and we can do data fusion then to, to kind of uh, get most from this data. And, and one insight has been that we can use the higher quality data to, to help in uh, kind of calibrating the, the, the lower quality sensors. So we have this kind of calibration as a service notion that uh, we can uh, then uh, uh, deploy uh, with the help of the network. So that's uh, you know an exciting direction that we have been working on, and and, and and this can be run so that we do the data gathering, the sensor management uh, at the edge of the network. So so that's where the edge and also the AI plays a role. So AI can uh, do the calibration of the sensors uh, also through the edge uh, edge environment, and uh, this uh, makes sense when we have uh, a lot of uh, sensors. So there's very high density deployment, and then. When we have sensors uh, that produce a lot of data, for example, we can have hyperspectral cameras. Uh, so, so then uh, we need uh, to do this localized processing because they produce really a lot of uh, lot of data uh, per second. So, uh, why 5G for global sensing? So, just to recap, so so uh, so we have this uh, really very kind of uh, uh, versatile environment. So, different kinds of sensors. Uh, uh, we have mobility as well, and uh, and then 5G uh, appears to you know be able to support uh, you know this environment so that we can support the mobile devices, and then we can also through edge uh, have this localized processing for the 
for the really high density deployments and also supporting these sensors that produce a lot of data. And, uh, and, and, and as, such, uh, as such, we have this uh, 5G as a, you know, sensing as a service uh, scenario kind of coming from this, so that we have uh, different kinds of, uh, uh, kind of the sensor deployments, sensor campaigns, and, and we can then uh, deploy those uh, over the network and help, uh, and the network can kind of help us to configure, control uh, these campaigns. So that's one takeaway from, from our work. And I believe that you know the big, uh, big uh, question here is that how do we really combine uh, this network AI and then the sensing AI together so that we have the synergies uh, there. So now uh, we are soon uh, ready to <clears throat> wrap up. So I want to just mention that we have uh, in Finland this Edge AI uh, special interest group organized by two uh, flagship activities we have. So uh, the Finnish Center for AI and then also the, the Six Genesis uh, flagship uh, run by University of Oulu. And, 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 and through this, uh, we have this uh, you know, really great community working on Edge AI and organizing events and, uh, and meetings and so on. So if you're interested, please have a look at our website and uh, stay also tuned for uh, updates about uh, future events and so on. So I, I think there is you know, another program being, being planned for the, for the fall. And, and certainly all ideas are welcome that, you know, what, uh, you know, events uh, we should organize and then what topics we, we should, you know, uh, consider uh, in this uh, community. But now uh, I believe I'm ready to, to conclude and, uh, and we can have a questions uh, on this uh, topic. Thank you. And now uh, we can go for the questions. Okay, so now uh, we have a question. So how far uh, in terms of distance in kilometers and in terms of uh, uh, right, so the distance, it's possible to use repeaters for sending the data packets and uh, uh, increasing signals uh, to uh, reduce the cost for setting up uh, new antennas. So how AI and cloud computing can help in this regard? Uh, thank you for the question. So, so it's really about, about the kind of network provisioning, so that how we place the base stations and the repeaters. And, uh, and in 5G, uh, especially in the, in the urban environment, so we will have very high density deployments of base stations. And, and of course, depending on the, on the radio uh, technology used, uh, we, we may need to have really uh, very high density of base stations. For example, in, in the millimeter wave, uh, uh, domain, so we need to have a uh, very high density of base stations. So, uh, so yeah, yes, so, so it's, a, it's a network configuration, network management uh, kind of issue, and, and, and AI and cloud computing can of course help here uh, by providing uh, valuable information uh, on the network, uh, you know, uh, uh, how the network is, is, is being used, how the network is being utilized, so we, we, we get uh, information that uh, uh, how the base stations, uh, so what's the utilization level, and every base station produces something like 1,000 parameters. So through edge computing, we can, we can do localized uh, processing of these parameters, and we can detect uh, uh, problems uh, with the base stations, and uh, this information, of course, uh, then is used also for, for, for provisioning uh, the access network. So, so, so we see that, you know, uh, if a base station is at a location that's not optimal, so then we can change the location of the base station and so on. So I see that this is really, a, a, you know, something where AI uh, does have a significant role in understanding that how the, the network uh, operates, including the base stations, and, and then providing uh, assistance that how to place the base stations, how to configure them so that we, we kind of uh, get most from the network. And, and, and certainly this distance, uh, you know, plays a role. Also other, uh, you know, uh, factors, uh, 
you know, from the environment uh, are important as well. So, so for example, uh, uh, you know, height of the base stations and, and, and where you place those and so on. So there are many, many, you know, uh, things that affect uh, the overall overall performance. And, and, and certainly, certainly now AI has a crucial role in, in kind of uh, uh, modeling this and, and then providing insights into the configuration. And, and, and to some extent, uh, some extent so, so we can actually automate this so that the AI can automate uh, the configuration of the base station. So, of, of course, uh, changing the physical, uh, you know, orientation or placement of the base station is, is one thing, but, but, but then uh, just configuring the, 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 the software is, is, is something that we can, we can easily automate, I believe. And, and, and then also uh, we, we, can, <clears throat> we can have mobile base stations. So it's also possible to, to kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, bring in uh, base station uh, capabilities when necessary. So there can be a car coming or a drone with a base station, but, but that's perhaps a more futuristic scenario. But, but there are certainly many, many opportunities here that we can do uh, in, in supporting also the, the radio access network. Right, so then we have the question that uh, uh, what is the problem with NV uh, IoT so that we need to use 5G? And, uh, and, and basically here, so, so NV IoT uh, so it's really intended for these low volume uh, use cases so that uh, uh, the sensors uh, do not produce much information and, and they do not produce uh, this information uh, uh, constantly. So streaming is not a good use case for NB-IoT. Uh, and, uh, and now when we go for 5G, 5G so, so, so we see that there is this, you know, as mentioned, this versatility of the, of the sensing scenarios. So, so NB-IoT couldn't accommodate, you know, for example, this hyperspectral camera or some of these other sensors where we require uh, more streaming operation or, or this kind of a high bandwidth uh, operation. So, so in, in this case, uh, the 5G, uh, the, the slicing and, and, and the, uh, the, the kind of the, uh, the features we get from 5G are very helpful in, in kind of supporting these, these different sensing scenarios. So that's the main point uh, here for NB-IoT. Of course, for basic se monitoring and, and sensing, uh, uh, this uh, NB-IoT is, 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 of course, uh, a very good uh, approach. And then uh, for 6G, so, uh, so, so of course, uh, 6G is, is a very, very kind of uh, uh, open issue at the moment. So, so, so we, we are still working with 5G context and, and you know, uh, looking at beyond 5G and, and 6G is in the horizon uh, for us, so, so, uh, so we, we don't really know exactly that, uh, you know, what things will go into 6G, but, but certainly edge intelligence is one very promising uh, aspect, having this more distributed way of uh, working with AI. And, uh, and, and security is a, is a key concern, but we of course have other concerns as well, so, so it's not only about, about security. Uh, then there's a question about uh, tactile internet uh, and, and what does it mean uh, for the current internet? So, so tactile internet just means that we, we have this, uh, uh, this internet that's uh, uh, really real time and, and, and capable of, of doing very kind of high bandwidth uh, sensing so that we have augmented reality, we have uh, you know, uh, display surfaces that react in real time to our interactions. And, and this interaction is really one of the key points. And if we are going to have interaction, so then we need to have really low latencies. Because of course, as we know, people are pretty good at noticing if there is high latency. So, so, so this means that uh, the tactile internet are being very real time, accommodating all these different types of sensors. Uh, it, it, it's really a burden for the network. And, uh, and, and, and certainly it's beyond 4G. And uh, in some aspects, it may be even beyond 5G supporting these uh, this, this, uh, highly interactive uh, cases, for example. So, so this is something that we are now, now kind of looking forward to tackle these, these challenges. So now uh, I believe uh, we have used our time. So thank you for the questions and for attending. And uh, uh, so please, if you have any questions, so contact me and have a look at our uh, uh, HAI community as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Sasu.
So if you have any questions still, excuse me. So if you have any, if you have any questions for Professor Sasu, please send them to us so we will forward them to Professor Targama. Next up, we will have a panel discussion between our Hack to Mall team and Nokia representatives. I would like to recommend you to stay on channel because this is a great opportunity, opportunity to get answers for your questions. Thank you. See you soon.